Aloha, Richard Halverson here, and uh, today I'm going to uh, start us out with the first assignment. Uh, and so uh, in this assignment, uh, we introduce ourselves to the MySQL database on our web servers. Every one of you has uh, been assigned a web server. And uh, so your web server is at this URL, and this here is your, your username. And, uh, and then your password is the, is the uh, first letter of your last name, capital, uh, lowercase, first letter of your first name, and then your eight digit UHID. And then um, uh, the characters, these, these three characters here, which is a percent sign, a hashtag, and an exclamation point. Um, the, uh, uh, then, uh, that takes you to your website, and then uh, you want to log into cPanel, and that's at slash cPanel. And the first thing we're, we're going to do at our website is we're going to set up the secure server default, uh, and then we're going to add this, this database here, and then we're going to uh, do some um, selections and deletions and so on on, on the database. And um, so for this assignment, you just have to follow all the directions correctly. Okay, so let's get started. Let's say that my my name is uh, Joe Schmo, and so let's say my uh, my uh, my UH user ID is J J S H L S C H M O E dot Hawaii dot 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 I C S three twenty one dot com. Okay, and this is my website here. This is what it looks like. And so let me, um, I'm gonna get fancy here. I'm gonna do this and do this, okay. And I'm gonna do this over here and this one over here. All right, so um, <clears throat> is this gonna work? All right, so so here's my website, and it's J. Uh, let's say I'm. My, let's say my email address is J S C H M O E Joe Schmo, and so uh, it's it's J Joe Schmo dot I C S three twenty one dot com. Okay, and so uh, this is what your website looks like. There's nothing there. There's a CGI bin direct directory that you're not really able to look into. But but anyway, one thing I want you to notice is that it's not secure. Uh, we uh, we were able just to go to http code slash slash joshmo.com. Now uh, we do have a secure server here, so you are you do have https colon code slash slash. Yeah, so there's the lock. But the point that I'm making is that if you simply go to joshmo, if you simply go to the to the uh, the domain name it's gonna send you to the not secure server rather than the secure server so this thing here takes care of that okay so so let's fix that so we go into cpanel so let me click here and do slash cpanel And here we are. And so your username is J S C H M O E. Oops. J S C H M O E. That's my username. My password is um, according to this here. It's going to be uh, uh, capital S, lowercase J, and then my uh, eight-digit ID. And then the characters percent hashtag exclamation point enter and uh, seems to have worked. And so let me go to the file manager, the first one. And uh, let's see. So uh, on the on the, the left is this is a typical. Uh, file explorer type format here this is uh, you want to go into your public HTML directory 
And that, by the way, is let me go back to uh, jschmo.ics321.com. Let me just, this is your main website here. This is the, what we're looking at is what's in the public underscore HTML directory. So in the public underscore HTML directory, all we see is this CGIBIN directory. Okay, so uh, so what we want to do is we want to uh, find the .ht access file, uh, which is in the public .html directory. I don't see it here, uh, but but it's a hidden file. Uh, hidden files have periods in front of their name. So let's so let's see if first let's make sure we can look at hidden files. So let me click at settings, click on settings. And right here, there's a checkbox, show hidden files. Okay, so that's not checked. So let's check it and click save. And ah, lo and behold, looks like there's a hidden uh, directory and there's a hidden file. And here is our HT access file. Uh, so there is an HT access file in there already. Uh, if, there, if, there, if there wasn't, you could add it right here by just clicking on there and typing in .ht access. But we already have one in there. So let's take a look at it. Click here and then click up here at on edit. And we see it has this in here. Uh, the H, the .ht access uh, file executes their commands, uh, Apache server commands that execute uh, whenever uh, the website uh, is accessed. And uh, this here is simply something that makes sure that, that uh, if it's a PHP file that, that we're using the latest PHP version of PHP, that's fine. Uh, but we want to put this in here, rewrite engine on. Uh, if it comes into port 80, we want to redirect to HTTPS. Uh, and so let's just copy this. And I'm going to put this first. So let me copy. And I'm going to put it up here at the top first. Now, uh, now you know, your assignment uh, will probably even work even if you got rid of this because uh, we are we actually are going to do some PHP at the end but I don't believe it's I think the default is actually PHP 7 and I think we're going to be doing PHP uh, 5 compatible stuff anyway so so this is not super important super important we're going to uh, write a couple of uh, APIs at the very end the last assignment but anyway uh, I want these these uh, three lines here so let me save them. And then uh, let me uh, just go back here and we're not secure. Let me just hit refresh and see what happens. Ah, look at that. It, it bounced us over to the secure server. And so the point here is now if we just go to uh, we'll go someplace else. wherever we are, if we should happen to type in now jschmoe.ics321.com without the HTTP or the HTTPS, when we just type that in there and hit enter, we go directly to the secure server. Okay, so that works. So that takes care of the first part of the assignment. Okay, the second part of the assignment, we are actually gonna create this database. And so uh, by now in the textbook, you're familiar with the uh, suppliers parts uh, SP table. Uh, we have some suppliers here, five suppliers, and they're in certain cities and they have certain statuses. And we got some parts here and they're in certain cities. And um, uh, there's a, certain names to these parts and the color. And, and uh, each of these tables has a key, key value, a primary key, which uh, uniquely identifies uh, the record or the row or the tuple. Same here. And uh, this is the uh, parts, supplier parts quantity table, which uh, you, you can interpret this as um, right now, Smith has got uh, uh, 300 r red nuts uh, in transit. That's when we interpret this, or maybe it's an order. Anyway, so um, so that's the meaning, the uh, the um, the meaning of the table here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to log into cPanel and we're going to uh, 
create the database, create a database, and then we're going to use PHP My Admin to uh, click click at, click on the database, and then we're going to create these three tables here, and we're going to create them by using Excel as an intermediary, and we're just going to basically copy and paste these into Excel, and then copy. Uh, uh, save it out as a .csv and then upload it into the, to MySQL. And I do have a little video here uh, showing you just how to do exactly that. Uh, and and then I have some uh, some constraints here that I want to make sure you you uh, you do. And then after uh, that's built up, um, uh, here's where you actually set up some foreign keys, some constraints. You you should be coming up on that uh, pretty soon. I think that's chapter three that starts to talk about that, that stuff, or maybe it's chapter two. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you to do certain things, to delete, to delete, to delete, uh, to uh, delete something at SP, delete, and then uh, change some stuff. And then at the end, your, your database, if you've set everything up correctly, you've set all this up correctly, especially if, you, if you've set this up correctly, uh, you should be, you should, uh, your database should be in a particular state. And so when you're done with that, just stop. And that's your, your submission. So, so don't go back in there and delete and add or anything after this. Uh, and there's a, uh, a website here that you can go to that you can use to confirm if your, uh, if your schema, the first part is correct. And I'll show you, I'll show you how to use that. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's go to cPanel. And we're done with this. I'm just gonna close that out. Uh, so here we are, oh, we're done with this too. So let's go back right into main cPanel. And uh, let's go to MySQL databases right here. And I'm gonna create a database called SSPP, just like this. And I'm gonna click Create Database. And so it's created, Joe Schmo underscore SSPP, okay. And then uh, let's go back here. And uh, so next, next I'm gonna launch PHP My Admin, which is this thing right here. Click on that. And over on the left here, we see here's the database. Let's just click on that link right here. Click on this. And so here we have an empty database. Okay, Joe Schmo, uh, J Schmo dot underscore SSPP database. Okay, so, um, so uh, now we're going to create these three tables. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use Excel. And we're just going to copy these. We're going to make these three tables. This is the S table. This is the SP table. And this is the P table. And we're just going to copy those into Excel and then save them out as, as, a, as a, a comma separated value CSV files. And then we're going to use the import function over here to uh, just import them, import them right into this database. So let's open up Excel. Do I have it open anywhere? EX. And so I'm just going to open up a uh, Excel here, and I think I'll put it over on this side. And uh, so let's start this out. I'm just going to copy this to a copy, copy, and then I'm going to click right up here, and I'm going to do a right click and do a paste this one. I'm just going to use the match destination formatting. And so there we are. There's our S, okay? Uh, so let me uh, file save as, and I'm just going to save it on the desktop. Uh, browse. Why don't we get to the desktop here? Here we go. Click. Okay, that's my messy desktop. All right. Uh, save it on the desktop. All right, save. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do this again. 
I didn't mean to save it that way. Save as uh, on the desk. I'm on the desktop, so uh, you want to change it to a dot csv comma delimited. This one asterisk dot csv, and I'm going to name this bad boy s s dot csv. So uh, let's go now. I can go over. Uh, let me just put this down here. Now over on this side. I can uh, import, click on, here I'm on Joe Schmo, the Joe Schmo database right up here, and click on import, and click on browse, and go to the desktop, here we are, and find s, here we are, s.csv, open that up, and, um, it's important that the first line of the file contains the table column name. So click on that. Make sure that's checked. It's comma separated. Click go. And uh, here we are. Uh, so it's called, it, it uploads as table one. That's what it looks like. Ah, that looks like our S table. So let's uh, go over to, uh, I'm going to open this up like this. And let's click on operations. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put it back. Let's, let's go back to here now. We want to make sure that it's INNODB. We want to set appropriate primitive types. Make sure we set the primary key. All right. So uh, first of all, let's change the name. And make sure you find the right form. We're going to rename the table. Rename it from table one. Rename it to S, capital S. And storage engine, make sure it's I-N-N-O-D-B. And then click go. All right, so now we have S over here. I'll click on structure up here. And let's make, um, let's make S-N-O, let's make it, uh, let's change it to, it doesn't really matter. But let's say we're going to have more, we're going to be able to have more than nine uh, suppliers. So I'm going to change this to, let's say, five. Leave it Varchar. And let me uh, make it, click on over here more, make this the primary key. Okay. Now, um, we are asking for much more than that regarding specifying these things. I guess we should set these fields as appropriate appropriate size. S name, uh, right now the, it's set at five maximum because that's the largest name uh, that was uploaded. But let's change that to something like, uh, I don't know, 50 or something. Let's make it even more reasonable. And status, let's say, let's say it, the person can have a, let's say the company can have a status of 100. Okay, so that's three digits. Let's say it's maximum is 100. So that, that's a three-digit number. So why don't you make that three? That way if somebody tries to put in a status of 1,000, presumably would reject it. And then the name of the city, let's also make that a little bit bigger, like maybe um, 25 or something. Who knows? Save that. Okay, so uh, this now is our S table. Uh, now, um, I showed you uh, up here, here where it says confirm your schema. Let's, let's just pop, pop over here and see what that looks like. Here it is. And so this is, uh, this is what you're going to use to confirm your stuff is right. So right here, type in your uh, cPanel username, uh, J-S-C-H-M-O-E, and my password is, uh, don't tell me, um, S-J... Percent hash exclamation and assignment one. Let me click on this submit. Ah, and what we see is this is the score so far, uh, and I got seven out of thirty-eight. And uh, okay, so and it's got uh, you see you can see see what I got correct and see what I got haven't gotten yet. And so the S tables there defined correctly as that. 
var char is defined correctly, primary keys there, this is defined correctly, uh, integers, this is status, this is defined correctly. So yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it's just it needs to be close. If you notice here in faint gray, uh, these are the tests. I've, I've got a weak fields test and a strong and a strong fields test and a weak con constraints test and a strong constraints test. In this in this particular assignment, it's 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 important that you get the constraints correct because the the constraints uh, being the way they are are going to determine uh, how how you how the da database responds when you try to delete certain certain records that maybe are attached to other records so so anyway that's that so so let's uh continue on here um we're gonna do uh, let's do sp it's the next table right here so let's go back to you make sure you're back at the database now because when you do an import you want to import a table into the database okay you don't want to be down here in uh the last table that you uploaded Okay, and, and click on, you can click on import here, but that's not what you want. You want to go back to the database and click on import here. Okay, and so let's uh, go back to our, um, let's use this again. Doesn't matter. Let's do, a, let's copy, copy. And over here, I want to go <clears throat> paste. And then I'm going to do save as, and then I'm going to do, instead of S, it's going to be called SP on the desktop, and it's going to be a .csv file. Click save. Fine. Okay, that's SP. And now um, I might as well do the last one here. Let's do P. So copy. Copy, paste, and there's P. There's P, and so let's do uh, save as. Uh, instead of SP, we're just going to name it P, and it's a .csv. Click save, and we're saving it on the desktop. That's fine. Okay, I'm actually all done using this Excel spreadsheet so i'm just going to close out here and so here we are over here and uh so we're going to import into uh joe schmo's uh sspp database click on import and then we're going to click on browse and let's do sp let's find sp here we are click there and uh, we just got to make sure that we check this first line contains table column names, click go. And now we've got this table two here. I can pop this up. Let's see it here, table two. Uh, looks like this. And that does look like the SP table. So let's click on operations. And we're gonna rename the table SP. SP, capital, make sure it's capital. And we're going to make it an INNODB and click on go. So now we've got SP. Let's go and click on structure. And for this one, uh, let's make this, uh, I'm going to pop this over. Let's uh, change this one to, this was uh, S5, uh, right? Up to five characters. Five. And uh, let's same with the parts. Let's make the parts be five. And what do we? What does it say about? Um, about SP, about quantity. Hmm. All right, that's that's a weight. Okay, so I I looks like I don't specify anything there. All right, I'm gonna, uh, 
I'm going to um, see what, hap what happens if I leave it int 3. I just want to see what happens. Let's go back to this. And, uh, okay, so here, if you click return up here, I'm going to close this old one. Click return, it should save it. And so you only have to type it in once. If I close this out, it'll, it'll go away, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to click back on this again and see what it says about quantity. Okay, so now we've got SNO. Okay, so that's what I had for quantity, huh? Okay. All right. Oh, this was a floating. This was a float. Okay. Yeah, the weight quantity is definitely an integer. What am I saying? Okay. So I, I'm I'm I I say that's okay, but I think you should probably change it to something more. Um, you can change it to the default integer size by simply taking that away, clicking on save. And um, now it's now it's that. If you hit refresh, it doesn't change this at all. All right. Um, so let's do P. So I'm going to go back to the database itself. And let's go back over here because I oh, I, oh, never mind. I have P already. Uh, click on import, browse, find P. And check this checkbox. First line contains table column names. Click. And you want to make sure that. Um, Let's uh, open this up. You want to make sure table three uh, looks like looks like P. Looks like the P table. Uh, click on operations, and you want to change the name of it to P. And you want to make sure that it is I N N O D B. Go. And um, so let's go back to uh, structure and let's make the size of it be five. And let's make sure that the name, we can make the part name be something much larger like. 50. You can imagine. Part names can get pretty long, especially if there's. And the color, this is just small colors, but who knows, we might get some uh, blue gray or some sort of fancy color name. Uh, weight. So I think this should be like a floating point number or it can be a decimal number. How about something like um, there's various uh, uh, forms that will that will uh, hold a, a decimal point. So uh, let's say it's a decimal number and the weight uh, is going to be at most uh, nine, nine um, places, nine digits. And you can do comma three, which means three, three digits to the right of the decimal point. So that's a that's a pretty good for weight. Who knows? Maybe it should be different. Depends on what kind of parts here, and depends on what the units are too. Anyway, city. Let's make this. Uh, I can't remember what we made the last one, but maybe uh, twenty-five or something. Okay, so, so let's look at here and hit refresh and see where we are. And so now uh, we didn't, we haven't, oh, we didn't set the primary keys for, uh, for the SP table. We didn't set the primary key for the P table. And then we don't have any of these foreign keys in there. So let's go back to uh, structure. Here's the, here is the P table. And we can um, we can do it this way. Click this checkbox and then click primary over here. 
And then let's go to the SP table, click structure. In this case, we want this and this to be the primary key. All right, so when we hit refresh here now, we see now we've got the primary key set up. Our points are getting higher. Uh, now all we've got to do is set these uh, keys. All right, so uh, what we want to do, it says, says right here, um, all right, this, I just realized something. Okay, on delete, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, these are parameters for the primary key. And what, we, what this means is that, well, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, so we're going to set primary, we're going to set the foreign keys in the table that uh, where they are, uh, where they connect to keys in other tables. Okay, so this is, this is the, it's, so it's, it's in the SP table that we set up these foreign keys. And, and the, primary key of the SP table is, is um, SNO and PNO together, okay? But SNO is actually a foreign key. SNO is actually the primary key of the, inside the S table, of the S table. And so, and the PNO is actually the primary key of the P table. So click on relation view up here. And here we create these relations. I'm going to pop this out here. And uh, so you don't have to enter in a constraint name. It will enter in a name for you. And, um, and this is going to be, as I said here, on delete, on update. Set it to restrict. So it's defaults to restrict. Restrict, restrict. And so I want to connect uh, PNO. It's the same database uh, of the P table and the PNO column in the P table. So the PNO in the SP table connects to the PNO column in the P table. Okay, let's add another constraint and it's restrict. And for this one, it's the SNO field in this table connects to the S table SNO field. All right, so we click save. And um, I think, where are we now? Oh, let me hit. Oh. Hold it. Oh, my gosh. This is, there's an error here. Okay. Hold on. All right. Uh, yeah, there was some. There was a bug in the uh, in the software that is used to do the grading. Okay, it was stuck on another um, on another uh, assignment. So anyway, um, so I fixed that now, and this is actually what it looks what it should look like down below. Uh, so so I've set up. In in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these foreign keys uh, right now. So let me just drop this. And drop this. Now I'm going to set these over again. Okay, so let me refresh this. Okay, this is what it should look like before you. This is what it would look like before you and before you set set up the foreign keys. There's only two foreign keys. Uh, they're both from the SP table, and they they ref reference uh, the same named fields in the parts table and the and the uh, in the suppliers table so let's let's do this again I'm in Joe Schmo SSPP and I'm going to go into the SP table and I'm going to go in structure SP table and up there there's a relation view if there's no relation view here that means that you did not that your database is not INNODB it means it's something else so make sure it's that click on relation view and it's restrict, restrict, and it's column PNO. This is the database, parts table, PNO, and add another constraint, and it is uh, 
SNO uh, S table that save. All right. Now when we uh, hit refresh, Oh, did I, did I do this wrong? Let's see what the assignment is. Oh. Uh, all right, so that's that. All right, so it's set to that. Um, this is two out of four. Update rule restrict is incorrect. Should be cascade. Delete rule is incorrect. Should be cascade. Uh, and for okay, so is that I tell you to do that later, right? Okay, so uh, all right, so um, so this the way it is right now is correct for doing part five. Okay, in part five, we're going to change these two foreign key constraints from ca for, to cascade. Uh, to cascade for, for both of them. So uh, first, set have them set to restrict, and then uh, do these, delete these, like that, and delete that, and delete that, and then you're going to change it to cascade. So after you've done these steps, you're going to change this to cascade, okay? And you're going to change this to cascade, and you're going to change this to cascade, and you're going to change this to cascade. Okay, that's what you're going to do after you complete these steps. Okay, so click save. Now, what I'm going to do, and we'll, oh, and by the way, now this is correct. This should be correct. So this is how you want your table to be at the very end. Everything's correct. You get all the points. Okay, but before you do that, before you set these to cascade, you want to leave them set to restrict because that's going to affect how you do these steps here. Okay. Now, how do you do these steps? Well, I'm going to do these steps with the database already set to cascade. So I'm going to, so, so, so my, my database is going to end up being wrong when it's over because I have I have prematurely set these uh, foreign keys to cascade rather than leaving them restrict. But the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to show you how you actually complete these steps. Okay. So the way you do it is 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 go to a Smith, find Smith, go back to Joe Schmo, the main database here, and uh, go to for the S table and find Smith, and you delete Smith. Boom, Smith is gone. Try to delete Adams. Okay, I go here, I hit delete. Boom, now Adams is gone. Try to delete red cogs. I go back to the, to the database. I click on here, P, and I try to delete red cogs. Where's red cogs? Right here, red cogs. Delete them red cogs. Uh, okay, now delete the Smith Red Cogs shipment in the SP table. Well, if we go over to the SP table, we don't find the Smith Red Cogs shipment in the SP table. It's gone. The S Smith would be S1, Red Cogs would be P6. There's no S1s here and there's no P6s here. Why? Well, it's because back here, back here, we had our, our foreign keys set to cascade. So that means deletions cascaded. When we deleted Smith, the, that deletion cascaded into the SP table, and all the Smith records in the, in the SP table were also deleted. So, so not only was the Smith record deleted in the 
not only was the Smith record deleted in the S table, but all of the all of the Smith records were also deleted in the SP table. That's what cascading does. So if you were to have done this, if I would have done this correctly, and I would have left these constraints to restrict instead of cascade, then when I tried to delete Smith, it wouldn't have let me delete Smith. Okay. It would have said, sorry, can't delete Smith because Smith also uh, has records in the SP table. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a restriction, uh, a deletion restriction. Um, now, uh, update, well, what update does is I, let's say I'm, I've got, okay, so we've got some S2s in there. If I decide, see, let me go to S. And I decide I want to change S2 to S12, whatever. And I say go. Then the update cascades. And when we look at the SP table now, we see all the S2s are now S12s. So that's what that's what cascading uh, updates and cascading deletes do. Uh, but but to repeat myself, uh, when you do these when you do these uh, first five, you want to have it set to uh, restrict. All right. Well, uh, so that that's about it for assignment one so uh if you have any problems just uh, email me or um or the graduate assistant thanks for watching